Welcome back. Before the break, I was continuing to talk about the precept of no lying. So let's keep traveling down the path of the five precepts. What happens when you lie? If you lie, no one will trust you and no one will want to help you. And of course, you will be no, of no help to anyone. If you lie, you, not only do you hurt yourself, you only hurt other people. And also, when you lie, it's basically a waste of energy to keep an illusion that we know is not true. And also, a lie causes us to decrease our capacity or ability to function effective, effectively in the world. An example of this is by lying, you no longer keep a good name. So you will lose the trust. People will lose trust in you. Therefore, when they need help, they will not come to you for help. The next uh, effect of lying comes to our ability that will decrease in terms of understanding or absorbing the truth of Buddhism. It, in the sutras, they have also talked about um, the effect of lying. For one thing, one who lies will have bad breath. And secondly, one who lies will not be protected by the devas or the heavenly beings. And thirdly, no one will trust you even when you're telling the truth. And also, you will not have any good friends who, all, who will give you good, um, good effects or try to help you. You will also always feel anxious. And also, when you lie, there are seeds of bad reputation being planted in you. And what's worth, a sutra says that one who lies could result in the birth in hell. Or you could even be slandered if you were born as a human. So by knowing how terrible lying can be, maybe this is a time for us, with the help of observing the five precepts, to stop lying and start to be an honest person. This is also one of the Bodhisattva's goals before enlightenment. That it's that, which is that they will try to never lie to a Buddha or himself or anyone in the path down to Buddhahood. We know that once we start lying, it, turn, it becomes a chain because this is the first lie, then you have to make another one. So it becomes a second and a third and so on. So it becomes an endless chain. Once you have lied, you have to keep covering up for what you have lied, uh, lied about before. So therefore, there will be no good effect in the long run. And also, lies will become a heavy burden. So it will be like as if you're having very heavy shoulders. Because you know that once you have told a lie, you have to live with it until the truth comes out. So this, to put it even uh, in an even worse way, it looks like a blanket of darkness or death amongst the living. So this is how bad lying can be. So still, Although it's bad, we know that lying is actually the easiest out of the five precepts to be violated because most of the time we will be it will be very hard for us to be completely honest about ourselves or the things we know. There are also benefits of no lying if we're able to observe the precept of no lying. For example, we will use language well. And secondly, we will be able to talk with much more confidence and faith in ourselves. And our language, of course, will also become much more beautiful. And we will express ourselves um, in a much better way once we stop lying. And furthermore, once we stop lying, by telling the truth, our words will reveal deep meaning and commitment that transcend worldly existence. Our teacher Sakyamuni Buddha is known as one of truthful words, one of real words, one whose words are thus, and one who never lies. Because of these qualities, the, Buddhas was the Buddha was able to teach the Dharma, which is also the truth to us. So that this is also a way he was able to achieve the purpose of leading us, the sentient beings, to enlightenment. And so that us, so for us who practice Buddhism, or who, if we call ourselves Buddhist, we should try to follow the Buddha and never forget about the primary primary virtue of always telling the truth. And remember, compassion is most perfect when it is sincere. So let us try and be honest and truthful persons in this world. 
The last of the five precepts is no intoxicants. This precept in Chinese literally means no drinking, as I have said before, bu ying jiu. But as we translate it into English, it becomes a word that says no intoxicants. Because we're trying to say that this, is, this precept is about not using any subst uh, substances that will blur our consciousness or cause us to do things that are not right. Therefore, a definition of no, not taking intoxicants comes down to taking drugs or alcohol that clouds our senses or makes us uh, do stupid things. And the second definition is the unreasonable use of drugs or alcohol. And the third definition of no intoxicant means not using drugs or not, not trafficking drugs or not telling other people to use drugs. Because when you sell drugs, just because you're not doing it, you're still causing other people to take substances that cause harm to their body. Therefore, in the same way, you have still violated this precept of no intoxicants. This precept of no intoxicants is different from the other four precepts because it in, in, it in itself does not really have evil and it doesn't really cause harm to other people besides you when you take an intoxicant. Still, the consumption of mind-altering substance, substances um, too often cause um, lapses in good judgment and violation of the other precepts. The following st story is a very good example of what I'm trying to say here. Once there was a man who started drinking. He got very drunk and he saw the neighbor's chicken running around. Therefore, he decided to steal the chicken and he, then he killed the chicken so that the chicken can go down with um, what he was drinking or the alcohol. So after that, his neighbor came along and asked him, have you seen my chicken? And he lied by saying he hasn't seen the chicken. And being so drunk and full, and as he saw his beautiful um, neighbor, he sexually harassed the neighbor. So therefore, in the process, just by drinking, he has also violated the precept of stealing, killing, lying, and sexual misconduct. This is how, how important the role of no taking, not taking intoxicants plays in the, pre the precepts or the five precepts because this is a chain of action. So it becomes a chain reaction so that even though he first began by drinking for his own enjoyment, it still caused him to plant a lot of bad karmic seeds by violating the rest five. And I'm sure that we can all think of even worse examples in this world. There are a few effects to taking intoxicants. For one thing, when you take intoxicant or when you drink, you have bad breath. And next, it causes you to have bad memory. Say for example, drinking for a long time or becoming an alcoholic, you start to lose your memory because it, dis it damages your brain cell. And the third effect is that it causes bad judgment because your, your ability to make judgments has been blurred. So therefore, in that state, when you're drunk and when, or when you're being affected by the drugs, you're less likely to make the right judgment of what is happening around you. And also, taking intoxicants will cause behaviors that will make you regret afterwards. Bec and the last effect of taking intoxicants is that it will violate your right to good health. Before, I've talked about drug trafficking being more severe than using drugs yourself. It is because that not only are you causing harm to other people, you're spreading this harm. So this is the same to tell asking other people to do the things. Even though you yourself do not do it, you have still violated this precept. So by considering the consequences of the violations of the precepts against taking, not taking intoxicants, it is good to consider the fact that Buddhism is based on, it is a, re, a religion based on morality, self-control and wisdom. So anything that clouds the mind or dulls our senses will it will be more likely to damage our wisdom and our self-control. Just as the Sutra on the Upasaka precept says, 
If you want to cr cross the great ocean of birth and death, you must uphold the five precepts with all your heart and mind. So the above are the contents of the five precepts. I will stop here for a while, and after we come back from the break, let's talk about the meaning and the importance of the five precepts. So don't go away. back to this particular session on the five precepts. I have just finished talking about the contents of the five precepts. So from this, you can see that there are actually five precepts consisted within, within these five precepts. But although you see five, there's actually just one fundamental spirit that lies behind all of these. And this means not trespassing or not trespassing against other, not trespassing other people's rights. Because we, if we really want to promote true freedom, which is what the five precepts try to do, this can only be done by respecting other people's freedom. Just as the chapter 8, chapter 82 of the Maha Ratnakuta Sutra states that the five precepts are not to kill or bear anger against any living being, or to be satisfied with what you earn and not to be greedy for other people's wealth, to, uh, to, uh, to abandon all unlawful sexual desires and not to covet other people's beauties, to refrain from lying and defamation, to stay away from strong wine and spirits that we are not intoxicated and lose our senses. Therefore, what the Sutra is trying to explain to us is the meaning of the five precepts through the teachings that not killing means not to violate other people's right to life. And not to steal, it means not to violate other people's right to their property or their belongings. And thirdly, not to commit sexual misconduct means not to violate other people's chastity and integrity, moral integrity to be more precise. And fourthly, not to, um, de to lie or to defame is not to violate other people's reputation and good name. And lastly, not to indulge in intoxicants means not to impair your reasoni reasoning or sanity so as to avoid from causing harm onto other people. So from this, I would like to emphasize the point that taking precepts does not mean adopting a negative attitude. So precepts are not negative. Precepts is not about placing a restraint on yourself. Although on the surface it tells you not to do this, not to do that, and not to do the other things, but in fact it's protecting yourself from losing your true freedom. So this is an action. When we observe precepts, this is an action to truly liberate ourselves. If you don't believe this, we can um, look at the people in the, in the, um, who have been imprisoned. All of them would have violated either one of the five precepts. So let us try to inquire into cases of imprisonment. We will find that those who have been imprisoned have either committed crimes which are contrary to the precepts. Some examples of this um, that are related to the breakage of precept include um, the following. Here are some examples that I can give you. Say, for example, for those who have committed um, the crime of murder, murder or disfigurement or unlawful persecution, in a way they have violated the precept no killing. And secondly, those who have done, committed the crime of um, graft, bribery, theft, uh, extortion, hold up or kidnapping. That means they have violated this um, precept of stealing. As for those who have committed sexual assault or abduction or bigamy or impediment of morality, 
they this means that they have committed the act of um, no the they have committed the pre, they have violated the principle of no sexual misconduct. So that's what I'm trying to say. And of course, defamation or intimidation or duplicity as well as slandering means that they have committed the precept of lying. And lastly, for those who dealt drugs, which would try to sell drugs to other people, or who actually took drugs or abused drugs, or who those who have caused a lot of trouble by dr getting drunk all the time, they are the ones who have been imprisoned for the, uh, for the fact that they have violated the precept of no, not taking toxicants. So therefore, there's nothing negative about taking the five precepts. And in fact, we can look at the obs uh, observing five precepts from a more positive point of view. So for example, here I've, well, I can talk about a, a more proactive meaning to each of the five precepts. For example, not to kill is to be more conscious about the environment. So we're protecting the things around us that we can see, or the, especially the lives, of course. And not to steal means to be always prepared to give. So when you practice generosity, when you offer a helping hand, when you share your belonging with other people, that means you're becoming a more generous person. And thirdly, not to um, be lustful or promiscuous. Is, means to be uh, respectful. So if we refrain from committing the acts of sexual misconduct, we're being much more respectful both to both ourselves and of course our families as well as the other party, as well as his or her family. So once again, we show respect to the people's uh, good names and their good reputation. And fourthly, not to lie or to defame means that we are starting to become a more honest and truthful person. So we learn to tell the right things and to tell the true things. So this is a way to show that by being honest, we're also observing the precepts of no lying. And the last one is to not to indulge in um, intoxicants. So that means to conduct ourselves properly. Therefore, by not taking drugs or not drinking, especially at the wrong time or drinking excessively, we uh, will make sure that our behavior will remain in a normal status so that we will not do anything that cause harm to any other people or do things that we will later regret in life. So therefore, the above are the more positive views about observing the five precepts. So we're not only s stopping ourselves from doing bad things, we're taking the step out, we're stepping out to actually do good things, to show that we are also practicing the observance of the five precepts. Next, the five precepts are also similar or analogous to the uh, five Confucian virtues. And these virtues are benevolence, righteousness, propriety, wisdom, and trustworthiness. So in Chinese, it becomes ren, yi, li. So by being benevolent, it means not to kill. By being righteous, it means not to steal. And by, being, uh, by observing the act of propriety, that means we should not commit the act of sexual misconduct. And furthermore, wisdom, by practicing or showing our wisdom, it means we should not be intoxicated. And trustworthiness is the last one, means not to lie. So therefore, as we show the spirit of the five Conf uh, Confucian virtues, we're also showing the spirit of the uh, Buddhist five precepts. There are a few benefits to practicing the five precepts. For example, when we refrain from killing, and well, when we stop killing, killing and protect life, we ourselves will enjoy a better, a uh, healthy body as well as a longer life. And secondly, when we do not steal things from other people, we will become much wealthy persons in this world. And thirdly, no sexual misconduct means that we will enjoy a harmonious and happy family. And no lying means that we will enjoy a good name and reputation. 
Lastly, not taking intoxicants would bring us the benefit of living a healthy body and of course enjoying a clear mind at all times. Therefore, once again, observing the five precepts is not about negative attitude, rather it's a very positive step towards life. The Buddha always asked his monks to remain both um, calm and to appear calm. So morality here can be conceived of as a kind of coolness or calmness, so which is or, or which will appear very comfortable to the one who practices it. So when we live in accord with the five precepts, we begin to tune ourselves not only to the teachings of the Buddha, but also to have the pure mind of the Buddha and dwell deeply within that pure mind. And of course, calmness founded on the promptings of the Buddha mind can never be shaken and it will never be wrong. Therefore, once again, if we practice the act of no killing, we protect life. And if we practice the precept of no stealing, we will be wealthy persons. And if we refrain from committing sexual misconduct, we respect other people's good family and of course our own as well. And by not lying, not only do we keep a good name and reputation for ourselves, we will also be respected by other people. And lastly, by not taking intoxicants, we will enjoy a good body, a healthy body and a healthy mind that always makes good judgments. So these are the benefits and the contents or the meanings of taking the Buddhist five precepts. So let us end today's session by revising the, pre the five precepts again. So the five precepts, Wu Jie, the first one is no killing, Bu Sha Sheng, second, no stealing, Bu Tou Dao, and thirdly, no sexual misconduct, Bu Xie Ying, fourth, no lying, Bu Wang Yu, and the last is no intoxicants. In Chinese, it becomes Bu Ying Jiu. So we have used today's very short period to explain the basic content and the spirit of the five precepts. We will stop here and join us next time. Thank you for watching.